Hi, my name is Andre Lishik. I'm a radiologist from Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia. And uh, my topic is going to be about uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound. And I'm going to talk about uh, basic techniques and instrumentation. And I'll show you how to do contrast enhanced ultrasound. Let's review technique and instrumentation of contrast enhanced ultrasound. Ultrasound contrast agents have been around for quite some time. They've been introduced in the late 1960s as hand agitated saline agents, and they're still available uh, for use in cardiology practices throughout the country. They're very easy to produce. All it takes is to hand agitate the saline syringe with some air in it they produce some microbubbles that can be detected with ultrasound and mainly used again in cardiology to look for uh, shunts in the heart. In 80s, we had sonicated agents and galactose agents, but we don't have them anymore. They're very unstable and somewhat difficult to use. Beginning 1990, gas and air mixture agents been introduced to the market, and this is what we use currently. They have varied shells and we'll talk about them in a moment. The microbubbles are encapsulated heavy gas microspheres. They have lipid lip lipoprotein or albumin shell. Diameter of those guys are about 2 to 10 microns. They're approximately the size of red blood cell. They stay within the vessels and they do not inter enter the interstitium. All agents are administered by intravenous injection and they dissolve in circulation in about 15 minutes. This is very beneficial because this provides you a very nice window to image the patient. Almost all exams can be complete in 15 minutes, but if necessary, microbubbles can be injected in about 15 to 20 minutes and number of injections is not really limited. Shells of the microbubbles are metabolized by liver and gas or gas and air mixture is excreted by lungs. Three contrast agents are available in the United States. Those are Definity, Optizone, and Sonovu. All of them are approved for cardiology applications and use of contrast agents in general imaging is considered off-label. Adverse effects of contrast agents are very, very mild. Some patients might complain of back or flank or renal pain. Allergic reactions have also been reported. Some other complications, which are very rare, include headache and dizziness, flushing, shortness of breath, hyper and hypotension. But by far the most common complication or adverse effect of contrast agents is back or flank pain, which usually lasts for 10 to 15 seconds and goes away with no prolonged side effects. Contraindications to contrast-enhanced ultrasound is known or suspected right to left or bidirectional cardiac shunts. It should be noted that we don't recommend screening of patients for cardiac shunts. Only patients with known or suspected shunts should not receive contrast. Patients with mild PFOs not detected before should not be excluded from this examination. Prior hypersensitivity reactions to contrast is obvious contraindication, but fortunately very small amount of patients will have that. And also ultrasound contrast agents should not be injected intraarterially. As you may know, there is a black box warning induced by FDA on all contrast agents and has been significantly decreased in the recent years. Current black box obligates you to tell the patient that there has been serious cardiopulmonary and allergic reactions reported within 30 minutes of contrast administration and also obligates you to have a trained personnel available to address, address potential side effects. Different agents supply differently and should be activated differently. Definity, one of the most commonly used contrast agent, is supplied as a clear liquid in a vial containing approximately 1.5 ml of contrast agent. It's activated by vigorously shaking it on special shaker called vial mix for approximately 45 seconds, 
producing this milky substance, which is suspension of microbubbles. And this suspension is ready to inject. It's a stable for approximately five to six hours and can be used throughout the normal workday. Sonovu is applied differently. It comes as a dry powder of microbubbles. It comes in a kit with pre-filled 5 ml syringe, which is used to reconstitute Sonovu microbubbles through specially provided pin. This pin prevents micro bursting of the microbubbles while transferring microbubbles from the vial back into the syringe. Optizone is supplied as ready uh, suspension of microbubbles. It's agitated by gently rotating vial for approximately three minutes and then is ready for injection. Same as other agents, it has a couple hours shelf life once agitated and can be used on a different patients if needed. There are different ways of injecting ultrasound contrast agents, but most labs will use some kind of uh, three-way stopcock or dual lumen line to inject ultrasound contrast agents. All of them will require 10 to 20 cc saline flush to clear the line and push microbubbles into the circulation. We like to connect contrast syringe to the straight arm of the uh, three-way stopcock to prevent turbulence and save microbubbles from bursting. Your flush syringe can go to the side arm and use to flush microbubbles into the line. For body applications, for liver and kidney imaging, doses of ultrasound contrast vary between contrast agents. Definity usually takes 0.3 to 0.4 ml to adequately image liver or kidney. You might increase your dose if you use uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound to image organs with very slow perfusion like ovaries or decrease it for something superficial or very vascular. Some of you recommended dose is 2.4 ml. Some authors recommend going down to 1.5 but this will be depends on the patient and application of contrast enhanced ultrasound. Optizone dose is 0.5 ml and again can be adjusted for individual patient and application. Different contrast imaging techniques been used to detect microbubbles. We started with static B mode and M mode, then moved to real time B mode and color doppler. Currently we use harmonic imaging or some combination of those producing complex imaging processing techniques that are used by different manufacturers to detect microbubbles in the circulation. Let's review principle of signal production. When ultrasound wave heat microbubble, microbubble will compress and expand depends on the cycle of the ultrasound wave, producing the volume pulsation that can be detected by ultrasound system. Amount of pulsation and amount of compression and expansion depends on power of ultrasound signal. At low power, ultrasound bubble will contract and expand in linear fashion, producing linear signal. When you increase your power, microbubble will contract and expand in nonlinear fashion. It will expand more than it contracts, producing nonlinear signal which is very different from signal uh, produced by normal tissues. When you increase your power to the breaking point, you can burst microbubbles, producing very strong nonlinear backscatter of a very short duration. This is very beneficial if you want to clear the field of view from microbubbles and then watch the replenishment to better quantify tissue perfusion. In the result, as a result of this non-linear oscillation, when normal tissues hit with 2.5 MHz frequency, they will return signal at 2.5 MHz. There will be no other frequencies returned, or at least no frequencies at high power enough to be detected by ultrasound system. When we introduce microbubbles, insonated tissues at 2.5 MHz will return signal at two different frequencies. 
One is 2.5 MHz, which is a fundamental or base frequency. And in addition, you're going to detect signal at 5 MHz, which is produced by a nonlinear oscillation of microbubbles. If you plot those frequencies and look at them with normal linear resonance, you're going to have one peak frequency. With microbubbles in the circulation, you're going to have two. And by filtering this base uh, or fundamental frequency out of your imaging, you can potentially produce image that will be only composed of signal from microbubbles. This is what it looks like an ultrasound scanner. Majority of the system will perform or at least allow you to perform ultra contrast enhanced ultrasound using some kind of split screen technique. On one side, you're going to see contrast mode image that without any injection of microbubbles should be completely black. You're allowed to have a little bit of noise next to the face of the transducer, but you should not see much of the signal within the image itself. Next to it, you will see B mode image, which will be of slightly degraded quality due to low mechanical index used uh, to produce these images. But this is a phenomenal tool to guide the ultrasound uh, examination to know exactly where you're imaging with contrast. After injection, you will see that microbubbles will rapidly fill the entire field of profuse tissue with high signal, leaving non-profuse areas black. Comparing pre- and post-contrast images, you're going to see drastic difference in contrast mode images only. It is very difficult to detect microbubbles on B-mode images. They're very, very bright. They're going to be almost as bright as background tissues, and they are almost undetectable to normal observer. But using different contrast-enhanced uh, detection techniques, you can filter out your normal base frequency, you can filter out your entire volume of normal tissues and only detect microbubbles. After the injection, if you follow the microbubbles or keep scanning for a certain time, ultrasound images can be quantified. What we can do, we can select region of interest that includes perfused areas in this tumor and then computer will plot time intensity curves. After we have that, we can quantify different parameters and use them to make a diagnosis. You can calculate time to peak, uh, time from the injection to peak intensity, which is very useful to detect cancers and also to judge treatment response. You can look for half washout time, which is time between peak enhancement and time when 50% of enhancement had disappeared. You can also look at the washout, which time between the peak enhancement and complete disappearance of the ultrasound contrast agent from the circulation or area under the enhancement curve that sums up all those criteria. Another way to do contrast enhanced ultrasound is to inject the bolus of ultrasound contrast and wait until it reaches steady state. After that, you can apply high intensity ultrasound pulse to destroy all microbubbles in your field of view and then without moving a transducer, watch the replenishment of contrast in the field of view. From that replenishment curve, you can get multiple values. You can quantify intensity value, which reflects microvessel cross-sectional area or amount of perfused blood vessels within the region of interest. You can also quantify rate of intensity increase, which reflects blood flow velocity in your field of view. And then multiplying intensity value by rate of increase, you can get some value uh, that reflects perfusion within the area. Another helpful tool is microvascular imaging, which provides some of microbubble signals over time as they transverse the vasculature. It is a very helpful tool for lesions with very slow flow or with very low levels of vascularity. Like this benign fibroma in the ovary, very slowly perfused tumor with very few vessels, but using this microvascular imaging technique, 
you can see microbubbles filling the entire volume of the tumor, providing you a nice delineation of tumor boundaries and potential quantification of blood flow. As a conclusion, encapsulated gas microbubbles are very useful contrast agents for ultrasound. They increase the backscatter signal from the blood and substantially enhance ultrasound images. They produce nonlinear resonance, which can be detected by harmonic imaging techniques. Different ways of quantification are available to you. Majority of them will employ some kind of time intensity curve plotting and quantifying different parameters. Microvascular imaging is helpful for lesions with slow flow velocity or, micro or low levels of vascularity. And finally, contrast enhanced kinetics can be used to characterize microvessel cross sectional area flow velocity and overall perfusion, which is useful in cancer imaging. Thank you.